First of a new series now on BBC World News, Hot Cities begins in one of the toughest and fastest growing mega cities in the world, a place very vulnerable to the threat of climate change. Bursting at the seams, it's Lagos. This is the fastest growing mega city on Earth. Some people have been here for years, others have just arrived, but they have all come in search of a better life. Okada is moved back to town down and if you pass a short short cut, you just quick reach there to that place for Olu is one of thousands of young men who capitalize on the overcrowded roads by working as a motorcycle taxi known as an Okada. In Lagos, everyone is an entrepreneur, and every street a marketplace. Where there is a need, there will be someone to meet it. I'm selling rice, beans, plantain, spaghetti. One plate is one quarter. For those migrating from outside Nigeria's borders, life in a tough city takes some getting used to. The police are coming here. They are attacking. We ask the reason. They say no. For the country, when you go to try to stop this thing, because it's a country. Come on. Cheek by jowl, side by side, one on top of another. It's the rat race, the urban jungle. More people live in cities than the countryside, and the number is rising fast. For the first time in human history, as we know it, human beings became an urban species. Homo sapiens has now become Homo urbanus. Some migrate in search of dreams, others out of desperation. Increasingly, this migration is driven by our changing climate. And as our cities swell, they pump out more and more greenhouse gases. It's a vicious circle. We would have many more extreme events, heat waves, floods, droughts, not to speak of the problem of uh, sea level rise. Climate change is going to have two types of opposing impacts. On the one hand, it will be pushing people from their rural homes into cities because that's where people feel that they can survive better. When you have rising sea levels, people will be pushed from low coastal areas, moving inland, and this can generate lots of conflict. The future is uncertain, but the odds are daunting, and the race for answers has begun. Nowhere is the need more urgent than here. One recent migrant from the countryside is Olu. He came to Lagos in search of work as a carpenter. Luckily, he also knows how to ride a bike. Yeah, the time we had the, our village, the time we had no freedom, no work for our village. But if you ride a bike, you will see, uh, you will see some money to eat. If my mommy say, the Olu, come give me some money, I'll tell them, say, no work. So my mom called call me say, Google Lagos. I can't tell her, say, Lagos, I no go. I can't say, yeah, my mom call, beg me, beg me, beg me. So I can't tell her, say, if I go, I will see changes in my life. But the thing will surprise me, in our village, you know, we get express, but it will be like this one. Sometimes, like 10, 20 minutes, motor no air, if you no pass. But this place, God, they just say, wow, wow. Where is these people? Where did they go? Where did they come from? As Africa's financial powerhouse, Lagos will be the third largest city in the world by 2025. The vision for Lagos is to make her the model mega city for Africa.
The mass migration begins in places like this. West Africa is gripped by drought. Farmers struggle to feed their families. Across all the countries of the African Sahel, hundreds of thousands of people are on the move. Tomorrow, Usman, the last remaining son of the chief of Diagle village, leaves for the city. <laughs> His father, Chief Salyu, recalls life when the weather was predictable. <laughs> Reluctantly, Usman prepares to leave his family. Usman's mother marks his crossing of the threshold with water. She hopes this will bring him good luck in the city. The family puts a brave face on things, but this is the start of testing times. As the desert spread, people will search further afield for new ways to survive. Every year, thousands and thousands of migrants from across Africa are drawn to Lagos in search of streets paved with gold, only to find that many streets aren't paved at all. With the constant flow of new residents, space is a valuable commodity. And those who move to the city from fishing communities along the coast find room by living on the water. Makoko, a slum on stilts, home to over half a million people, continues to expand deeper into the lagoon. Large parts of the community are French-speaking from the neighboring Republic of Benin. Like Jean and Christian, they have come in search of work. Alors ici, nous sommes toujours dans Makoko et nous sommes sur l'eau. Là, bon, ici, notre vie ici sur l'eau, peut-être peut quand tu voulais aller payer quelque chose, tu as besoin de pirogues pour partir. Ouais. Quand tu veux payer par exemple des condiments pour préparer la sauce, tu risques de trouver une pirogue pour partir. Si tu n'as pas de pirogue, tu ne peux pas dire que tu vas bouger. Tu ne vas nulle part. Tu ne vas nulle part. Ici, maintenant, il y a un peu de l'argent. Si on vient ici se siéger ici, Pour faire des activités, on trouve au moins de, de l'argent pour au moins nous satisfaire. C'est pourquoi on vient ici pour se siéger ici. Au village maintenant, il y a beaucoup de personnes qui, ont, qui sont encore là-bas. Mais ils ne trouvent pas à faire comme des activités là-bas. C'est pourquoi nous sommes venus se siéger ici pour trouver au moins à manger. Typically, it is West Africa's men that journey to Lagos in search of work, to be joined later by their families. Amidst the overcrowding and squalor, people are at least making a living. But what happens here has consequences for people living far beyond the city. On the streets, Lagos is choking, its infrastructure overwhelmed, and all the time the traffic pumps out more and more of the pollution blamed for climate change. Lagos has become famous for its traffic jams, or so-called go slows. Here, this is a business opportunity. Every rush hour, the roads become a marketplace. This one, uh, I'll give you for it. The city's famous street hawkers sell everything from phone cards to calculators. 
Ten ten. One pack. No, seven fifty. Uh, I'm give me a kind of sprite. Sprite. Bring change. How much? Hundred net. Two fifty. Okay. But if you don't need to shop and you're determined to beat the traffic, catching a taxi bike is the fastest way to travel. Olu rides his Okada a couple of days a week when he can't find other work. If you are bad, you know, say, yeah, Muto, then you feel good that side. But Okada feel enter that side. Yeah, this Lagos, actually, we have water. So we have, we have a, a erosion. It's because of the erosion, we have a hand. The second thing is the people. There's people plenty in Lagos.